Hey kitties, another cooking video since we're all getting super fat in our quarantine. Um, today we're gonna make pasta puttanesca, which is whore pasta, because I am a whore. Uh, yeah, this dish is Napoletan, and apparently all the whores in Napoli would, like, eat this dish between their, like, clients. So, let's make whore pasta. First, as always, a shit ton of garlic. And this is super chunky sauce, so you can just smash it and chop it into, like, big chunks. Like that. Oh, and by the way, let me just add, this dish was like my childhood. I've been eating this forever, and nobody freaking makes it right. So, don't listen to other recipes of this. This is how you make it. Okay, now we've got our... Chunky garlic, we're gonna push that to the side. And we are going to take our tin of anchovies. Don't freak out, we're gonna cook it. They taste good cooked, not raw, I got you. Don't worry about it. Your anchovies, and you're basically just gonna shred them. Use a fork and knife, just shred. And it doesn't matter if you don't get them perfect because they'll shred more in the sauce. Boom. So there you go. And don't worry about the anchovies. We're going to cook them in oil and they're going to melt. We're going to take our pan and put in a happy little layer of olive oil. And now we are going to toss in our anchovies and our garlic. And we're going to saute this shit. Uh, you can also kind of like crush the anchovies more with your wooden spoon, because you want to make sure that they really melt into the oil. And as always, you don't want the garlic to brown too much, but this sauce is a little more forgiving. I'm gonna put in some pepperoncino, pepper, a little salt. Sure doesn't burn, but it's gonna get a little dark. So cook this for like two, three minutes maybe. Then you want to drain your capers from the jar and toss those in and see how the anchovies are all melted now. Mix, mix, mix. And that'll deglaze it a little bit. Then same thing with your pitted Kalamata olives. Throw those in. Add a little salt. You don't want to do too much salt because this is already like super, super, super salty, just like the hookers. Then you want to take a can of whole peeled tomatoes and mash, 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 mash. And pour that shit in. Boom. Mix, mix, mix. And then, so it's not like too heavy. What I like to do is add a little bit of crushed tomatoes in there too. These are the best crushed tomatoes, by the way, Sclafani. Mix it on up. Tiny bit of salt. Tiny pinch of sugar. Basically wanna like bring it up to a boil. Now you're just gonna let it cook for a while cause you want it to reduce and cook off a lot of that moisture. All right, it's starting to reduce and thicken up a bit. Thick little slut. You want this to be super thick and reduced. Look at that. So you want it to cook until you can sort of part it without there being a lot of water. Um, then when your sauce is almost ready, you're going to put in your pasta. And I'm using penne rigate. You could also use rigatoni or whatever. I'm using the whole box because this is really good uh, the next day or cold. So I make a whole bunch, but you could easily like cut the whole thing in half if you want to. I'm a hungry hooker. Look at that. So once you're waiting for the pasta to cook, once it's fully reduced, you're gonna just put the heat on low, let it chill out for a little bit until this is done. And you want this to be al dente. I don't wanna see any overcooked pasta. Hell no. That is some Medigan shit. And don't use spaghetti in this either. That's also some Medigan shit. No. Now our pasta is done. You want it super al dente. Taste it to make sure. 
and we're just gonna scoop it right into the sauce. Let all the pasta water fall in. And we're also gonna add a little more pasta water. Blast that heat up to high and mix, 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 mix. And you always wanna cook it for at least a minute. Look at that. I also added some parsley and black pepper. Look at that. Look at that. Top it with a little black pepper. This is like one of the few cheeseless pastas in the Italian canon, but look at that. The whores are ready to eat. Boom. Hey kids, all right, I'm gonna show you how to make the best BLT ever. And this is like my breakfast right now. Actually, wait, it's like a B-A-A-T-T. -T. I don't know, don't worry about it. You will need bacon, bread, tomato, avocado, arugula, salt, pepper, mayo, and truffle oil. Ta-da! First, you are going to fry your bacon. Oh, and I should say, if you can, get thick cut bacon, because I accidentally got this thin little pussy bacon, and yeah, get thick cut, but whatever you have. All right, and when your bacon is done, put it on a plate. Okay, now you're gonna make your truffle mayo. It's just, you're gonna put mayo in a bowl and put in some truffle oil. Simple as that. And mix, 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 mix. Now set to the side. Ta-da! Now you're gonna cut up your tomato and your avocado. Just gonna get some nice thin little tomato slices. Beautiful. And you are going to salt these. Get them on each one. And put to the side. Then get your avocado. Cut that shit in half. Remove the pit. Boom. And put it to the side. Then you want to get your bread. Uh, if you have sourdough, this is really good with sourdough, but they didn't have any. And on the outside, you want to brush on a little truffle oil. And I try not to use a lot of this because it's friggin' expensive. <laughs> now, super important, that's going to be the outside of the sandwich. So flip that shit over. Now you are going to get your truffle mayo. And put that shit on. And don't be stingy with this either. Ta-da! Now you're going to get your bacon. And you're just going to layer it on. This is why I said get thick cut bacon because this pussy bacon is not as good. See, what is that shit? Come on now. Pussy bacon. Psh. And I like to salt every layer a little bit. Not too much, but... Then you're gonna get your avocado and you're just gonna make little slices. I should mention this is a very messy sandwich. <laughs> Ta da! Salt. Now your tomatoes. And I don't usually like tomatoes in sandwiches, but this makes it really good. Trust me. Bring some acidity. Salt. Pepper. Then you're going to get your arugula. And just put some on top. And I know, this is a very overloaded sandwich. You're going to need some big DSLs to eat this. Salt. Now here's the hard part. Boom. Push down. Okay, and now, if you have a panini machine, put it in that. Otherwise, if you have a grill pan, put it in that. If you don't have either, you could just uh, toast the bread before you make the sandwich. Okay, so I'm gonna use my grill pan. Wanna get it nice and hot. Not too hot, though. Okay, and you're just gonna push down. Pretend it's a panini machine. Okay, 
Okay, good. It only fell out a little bit. <laughs> and it's okay if it does that. Just push it back in. No big deal. Give it like 30 seconds each side. Just a nice little toasty toast. Look at that. Okay, and if it fell out a little bit of the sides, that's okay. Just push it back in. Throw it back in there. Nobody's watching. Now push it down. Ta-da! Look at that. B-A-A-T-T. -T. Boom. Who's a dog? <laughs> come on, come get it. Ah, good boy. So you want to do 14 tablespoons of butter and 8 ounces of chocolate. And I know they say, like, oh, good chocolate, but this is all I have. Whatever. It's pandemic. Don't worry about it. Put it in a bowl over a pot of water. Mix, mix, mix. Till it's like this. Very nice. Then you add in a cup of sugar. Stir, stir, stir. A teaspoon of espresso powder. Half a teaspoon cayenne pepper. Brings out the whatever. Then sea salt. I just kind of go by taste. I just add a lot. I don't really measure stuff. Same with the sugar. You could add more or less depending on what you like. Then we are going to add five eggs. And this is important. We're going to add them one at a time because there isn't much flour in this. So adding them one at a time, that's what's going to like hold it together and shit. I shouldn't say shit when I'm using chocolate. Fuck. Give her a little stirry stir. Beat that shit. Take your... Frustrations out on this motherfucking cake. Another one. Boom. See, it's already more fluffy. Now we are going to do one teaspoon of flour. And because my flour is shitty and has been sitting on the shelf a long time, I'm going to sift it, but you totally don't have to. So boom, 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 boom. Sifty, sifty, sift. Stir, 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 stir. Look how freaking fluffy. And give it a taste. See what it needs. You can add more sugar, more salt. I like mine to be like sweet and salty, so I add more sea salt. You want your oven to be 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you're going to take a cake pan. Uh, I like to put parchment on the bottom of mine because my shit always sticks. Did I just call my food my shit? I mean, my... You know what I mean. Whatever. Don't worry about it. And pour, 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 pour. Okay, I might need a spoon. She's pretty thick. T-H-I-C. C-C-C-C-C-C-C. Look at that. She is like friggin' thickums. Uh, I should have said you should butter the sides if you use parchment paper. I forgot to do that, so hopefully it won't ruin my cake. Oh, shit. I didn't lock her. Fuck. All right. Now I top with a little more sea salt. And let's get thickums into the oven. Like the Jews. Oh, my God. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Kidding. <laughs> All right, see you soon, sweetheart. Have a good nap. Oh, and we gotta bake this bitch for 20 to 25 minutes. Time to take thickums out of the oven. Look at that. Oh, I think I stuck my thumb in her. <laughs> and this is not the typical cake where you can like stick something in, it'll come out clear because it's just like different. Also, it's gonna be cracked and it's gonna fall. That's good, you want that. Um, so now you let it rest for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know, however long. And ta-da!
Okay, so we're gonna make beef carpaccio, which is kind of like raw steak salad. It's kind of raw, don't worry about it. I got you, just go with me. Okay, so you gotta get the beef tenderloin. And there's only one supermarket near me that sells like the whole thing. Uh, so if you can't get that, don't worry about it. Get like filet mignon. And you wanna season it with salt and pepper and then put it in the freezer for like a half hour, an hour, however long. Uh, I forgot to season it first, so I'm gonna do it now that it's out of the freezer and hopefully it won't ruin things. Then you wanna preheat your pan with a little bit of vegetable oil, just a tiny bit. That might be too much. Um, and you want this to be crazy, crazy hot. If you have the cast iron, use the cast iron. If you think your pan is hot enough, no, it is still not hot enough. Keep going until you think it's gonna burn the house down. Cause like, you don't want this to cook. You're just quickly searing the outside, get a little crust. That's it. Okay, now that it is very seasoned, season that bitch on all sides. Um, now, your pan is gonna be crazy, crazy hot. Now, put that shit in. <laughs> and you're only gonna cook it like maybe 30 seconds to a minute on each side. You don't want it to cook. It's supposed to be like basically raw. So just leave it. Don't touch it. Then we're gonna turn it. Ooh, look at that crusty crust. And you put it in the freezer so that it won't really cook be on the outside. See how it's just like the crust and turn it like that. And look at that. This thing is like crustier than Courtney Love. So crusty it's ready to join Antifa. So you're going to let it cool off for a second and then you're going to cover it in plastic wrap and throw it in the freezer. Okay, when you cover it, you kind of want to be like shaping it into a log so it holds its shape. Then... Throw it in the freezer for at least an hour. It'll make it easier to cut thin. And I don't know what to tell you guys while it's in the freezer, while you wait, like watch Netflix, play video games, go play with yourself, do something. I don't know, just let it freeze. And then we'll come back. Get out of the freezer. It is very frozen. So now we're gonna work on our salad. Oh my God, did you guys ever see when Martha Stewart was like going to jail and she was cooking something on the Today Show, and they kept asking her questions about it, and she was like, I am going to focus on my salad. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do, focus on my salad. Okay, so we have arugula, and we're gonna make the dressing. And the dressing is super easy. Olive oil, then lemon, and I don't really measure shit, just like, you know, add however much you want until it tastes good, I don't know. Then a little Dijon mustard. And you could also add like shallots or something, but I don't have that stuff. It's the friggin' apocalypse. What do you want from me? Stop yelling at me. Oh, and salt. I forgot salt. <laughs> then we're gonna add an egg yolk and mix, 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 mix. A little bit of dried English mustard powder, if you have it, if not, no big a deal. Then add some pepper. Okay, boom. Oh, and this is optional, but you can also add a little splash of milk if you want it to be a little more creamy. Then I like to add a little olive oil first and some salt. Then a little dressing. And mix, mix, mix. You don't want it to be soaking in dressing, by the way. Just a little bit. You can have more later. Okay, so we're gonna put this to the side for now. Boom. Okay, now we are going to take our beef and we are going to slice it as thinly as possible. And don't worry if you can't get it super, super thin, I will show you a trick. Holy shit, look at this, I'm filming from up top. It's like a damn tasty video. Yeah. All right, let's do this. And that's why you froze it, so it would be super thin. The first one, don't worry about it too much. <laughs> Look at that perfect little slice. So now, you're gonna take this, and you're gonna smash it down with the knife, and it'll make it even thinner. Ow. 
And the heat from that will also defrost it. Because you don't want to be eating frozen beef. Okay, this one might have come out a little thick. Boom. Look at that thin-ass beef. And we're going to put that on the plate. Okay, so you're going to put your salad in the middle of the plate, and then you're just going to arrange your beef shingles around it. And just do it as many times as you would like to. See how thin... Check it out. Oh, and by the way, if your knife gets freezing, you can just, like, run the knife under hot water. And I'm gonna focus on my salad. And that is what it will look like after. So then you can squeeze a little lemon on top. Salt. And now you're going to go into your cheese drawer. Yes, my roommate made us a cheese drawer. He is the best. So you're gonna get your Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and your potato peeler. And that was a fail. That was also a fail. Okay, I'm gonna move to the cutting board. There we go. You're gonna shave some cheese slices onto it. Then top with a little lemon, salt, pepper, dressing, and look at that. Boom. Oh my God. This is my favorite dish ever. Like ever, 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 ever. Um, all right. I'll see you next time, kids. Bye. Oh, and by the way, here's a tip for cleaning. So you don't have to sweep the floor. Get a little human garbage disposal like this. Charles. You're gonna get the coronavirus. No pictures, please. Ah! Hey, babies. Okay, so this is like really easy, quick pasta with just stuff that you have laying around. So, yeah. So first, take an ass load of garlic. And you probably don't have to use this much, but I'm dying. I like garlic. And I like to do the Goodfellas, where you slice it super thin. So sliced garlic gives better texture, but crushed garlic gives better flavor. So I do both. Crush that shit. Crush it good. Crush it real good. Then just chop to make it more even so there are no like massive chunks. Boom. Put a bit of olive oil in. A thin layer and on low heat low 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 you add your garlic now I cannot stress this enough low heat you do not want this shit to brown no browning if it browns it will ruin your sauce it'll taste like cremated tomato juice it is terrible so Cook it on super low heat, three to five minutes until it's like, what do they say? Translucent. Then you're gonna add salt. And pepperoncino. And keep an eye on this. Remember, no browning. Cook this shit low and slow. Now, you can use whatever tomatoes you have in your pantry. I don't have like good tomatoes to mesh make it fresh, but uh, these are really good. They're like imported from Italy, cherry tomatoes. They're really good. Or you could use like the San Marzano tomatoes. Just use good tomatoes, canned. I don't, I don't wanna see any of that jarred shit or plastic bottle cheese. That's not food. That's wood chips. Don't. It's not even cheaper. It's like more expensive or the same price and what? This takes like five minutes more. So I don't wanna see any jarred sauces here. Throw that shit out. Even if it is a pandemic, I don't care. Okay, looks like the garlic's done. So we're gonna turn that heat up and immediately, before this shit has a chance to brown, tomatoes in the pan. And mix, 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 mix. Don't worry too much about crushing them now. You're gonna do it later. After like a minute, 
when you're hearing it, then turn the heat down a bit. Like medium, medium low heat. Because you don't want it to burn. Season, salt, because, why? Because we season every stage, every level of our food. Why? Because we are not that kind of Caucasian. We season. And a teeny tiny little pinch of sugar, which is very controversial in my family. Oh, also, you gotta turn your water on to boil the pasta. And salt the shit out of that pasta water. Why? Because we are not that kind of Caucasian. All right, now that's getting soft, you can poke at them a little bit. And we're gonna put it on low heat, let it chill out for a little bit. Now, if you want, depends how chunky you like it, but you can take your potato masher and just press down on the tomatoes a little bit, make it a little bit more even. I'm also gonna add a little bit of parsley. Then when your water's boiling, you're gonna put in the pasta. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm horrible at eyeballing how much pasta I need, so I don't know what to tell you. And for this, we are using Capellini angel hair, which is really good. When it's looking thick and kind of creamy. So, still on low heat. Now, you're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. And what that does is that emulsifies this bitch. Turn up the heat a bit. Stir, stir, stir. And angel hair doesn't take too long to cook. So maybe like two minutes, three minutes, I don't know. Really make sure you don't overcook the pasta because that overcooks quickly. Turn the heat down on this until the pasta's ready because I am horrible at timing. Now we are going to add in our Parmigiano Reggiano, the cheese. Like I said, no, none of that friggin' bottled shit. Don't come at me with that, I don't wanna hear it. Now you're gonna take your pasta and put it right in the sauce. And before you mix it, right on top of the pasta. We're going to add a ladle of pasta water, maybe like a ladle and a half, because angel hair will make that shit dry. Then turn that heat up to high all the way and mix that shit around. And you always gotta cook it for at least a minute after you put the pasta water in or you'll get like that nasty liquid at the bottom of your bowl, that's gross. So cook it for a minute. Look at that. And in the bowl, this is my little trick. I break cheese at the bottom of the bowl before I put the pasta in. So it's cheesy on the top and on the bottom. We like our food very seasoned. Why? Because we are not that kind of Caucasian. Yay. Look at that. Then add more cheese on top if you want. Boom. Lovely. Do you guys want to see the easiest pasta dish ever? This is like my broke food or late night snack. Okay, so it's three ingredients. Pasta, Parmesan cheese, olive oil, and I guess salt, but like, does that count? No. Boil the pasta. And for this, orecchiette is perfect. Uh, if you don't have that, you can use shells or something, but this one's the best. Boil the pasta. Then you're gonna take a bowl and Parmesan cheese, and that's it. And I don't wanna hear any of this like bottled shit. That is gross, that's like wood chips. No, get like actual Parmesan cheese. And now you are going to grate a shit ton of this in a bowl. A boom. Boom. Then you're gonna take your extra virgin olive oil, and this is where you wanna break out your good olive oil, if you have it. If not, that's cool. And you're gonna pour some olive oil in. 
like that. Not too, too much, because you're gonna add a little bit more later. When your pasta is done, you're going to take your pasta and put it right in there. Then you're gonna to top it with a little more olive oil and more cheese. Oh, you're gonna mix it all up. Mix, mix, mix. And you're gonna add a little bit of the pasta water, like a ladle full. Okay, not a little bit, like a ladle. And that's gonna make like a creamy, cheesy sauce. Mm. It doesn't look so cute, but it tastes good. Hey guys, so here's how you make really easy tuna avocado steak. Also, oh my God, I can't with this quarantine hair. Dry the tuna. Salt and pepper. Then sesame oil and get your pan crazy, crazy, crazy hot. Uh, if you think it's hot enough, it's not. Go until it's gonna burn the building down. Oh, and they're doing construction in my house right now, so if you hear banging, trust me, it's not me. I wish. Then when your pan is freakishly hot, you don't wanna cook this, you just wanna sear it. So like a minute on each side, maybe a minute and a half. Don't touch it when you put it down. Just leave it there, don't fuck with it. Now turn that shit. Now turn it on its sides. Get it on all sides. And put it on a plate. Now get your avocado and cut that shit in half. Then just take out little avocado slices. You could all do it in here and then just like scoop it out. And if you want, you could do a second avocado if you're an avocado whore like me. Okay, now some soy sauce. and some Japanese salad dressing. Then top it with sesame seeds. Boom! And that whole thing took like five minutes. Check it out. Hey kids, so we are going to be making uh, orecchiette with broccoli rabe and sausage. And you know how Italian people always have like terms for their pasta? They're like, oh, it's little shells or it's little bells or whatever. So they say that these are little ears, but I've always thought they were like, they looked like little condoms. So my mom and I always said they were little condoms. Anyway, first you're going to get your broccoli rabe. And you're gonna cut off the stems. You wanna leave like a little stem, but get rid of like the nasty parts. And if you see any yellow leaves, uh, get rid of those. And you are going to blanch them in a pot of boiling water just for like a couple minutes. That'll take away some of the bitterness. Okay, so you're gonna let it cook for like two or three minutes and then you're gonna cover it with uh, cold water to shock it, stop it from cooking. Okay, now set it to the side. Okay, now you're gonna get a pan and put in your extra virgin olive oil. And you're gonna want a fair amount cause it's not like there's a heavy sauce in this or anything. Now you are going to take your Italian sweet sausage, <laughs> giggity, and take it out of the casing. Yeah, maybe do this in a, on a plate first, because this seems not smart. 
and you just want to break it up. And you're just going to let that cook for like a minute or two. Then you get your garlic, shit ton of garlic, chop it, crush it, slice it, boom. And you're going to add in your garlic. And make sure the heat doesn't get too high, you don't want it to burn. Now you're going to add in salt, black pepper, and some pepperoncino. Okay, and this is optional. A lot of times don't do this, but I like to put a little splash of white wine in. Deglaze that shit. Now you're going to put your orequete in, salted boiling pasta water. Then you're going to add in your broccoli daub and mix her up. Well, then when your pasta is done, nice and al dente, throw her right in. Then you're going to add a spoonful of pasta water and let it cook for a minute. And voila. Look at that. Yo, bitches! We are going to make banana pudding. Come on, hit me with your dick jokes. Now first you're going to get a pot. And you're going to do a half a cup of sugar. And you don't really have to sift this shit, it's just... This shit's been sitting in my pantry for a long ass time, so you want to make sure... You're not getting any funky stuff in it like that. And three tablespoons of flour. And salt. About like half a teaspoon. And mix, mix, mix. Okay, so now you're going to do a whole egg. Shit! Motherfucker! Ugh. God damn it! Ugh. Making a fucking mess. Shit. These eggs cost like 10 bucks at the grocery store. Because they don't have fucking eggs anywhere. So, that was like 2 bucks that I just fucking pissed away on my countertop. God damn it. Alright, do I have another one? Fuck. Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. A whole egg. <laughs> All right, I'm getting this back on track. <laughs> okay, so one whole egg and three egg yolks. You know, I feel a lot of pressure cracking eggs on camera. This is like, not right. Okay, one egg yolk, two egg yolk. Oh, it's like the Tootsie Pop guy. A one, a two, a three, a three. All right, then mix, mix, mix. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this on medium low heat. And yes, I know I need to clean my stove. I hear you. Okay, mom. And make sure that that's actually like very low heat. Okay, then you're gonna add in two cups of milk. And stir, stir, stir. Okay. So you're gonna put this on medium low heat, and this will take about 10 minutes. Don't stop stirring this shit, and don't let it get too hot. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. Don't stop stirring this bitch. Don't let this bitch get too hot, because otherwise you will have scrambled eggs. No, and this takes like 10 minutes, so I know it's like a pain in the ass and shit, but you know what's even more of a pain in the ass? Having to throw it out and make it again. And trust me, because I've done that before. So, stir. You can sing Bohemian Rhapsody. You can sing the opening of Into the Woods. You can do lots of things in the 10 minutes. But I promise, 
it'll be worth it. Last time I tried to make it, it came out like scrambled eggs, and so I'm still kind of traumatized from that. I mean, that could happen this time, and, you know, then I'm really gonna look like a douchebag on here, but wouldn't be the first time. What can I tell you? Stir, stir, stir your pudding. God, this shit takes forever. Why the fuck did I choose to make this? Damn it. It's like starting to thicken, but not done yet. Okay, see, it's starting to get there. By the way, if you have a whisk, you might want to use that, but my whisks always break. Because, like, I buy them at the 99 cent store, and my mom always said, buy cheap, pay twice. Okay, look at this, see? It's like... Almost gonna be done soon. We're making progress. Don't you turn that heat up. And you can taste it now and see if, like, it needs more sugar, more salt, whatever. A little bit sweeter, so I'm adding a touch more sugar. But, whatever you like. And you know it's done when it is bubbling! Yay! I didn't fuck it up! Go team! Hell yeah! Okay, turn that heat off. And quickly, you want to add in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can also add in a little pinch of butter if you like. That's optional. And if you have little scrambled bits, you could strain it with a strainer now, but I just spent 15 minutes stirring this. You want me to strain? I ain't straining nothing. What are you, fucking nuts? Oh, also, probably take that off the burner. Um, then you're going to... Oh my god. I dropped another friggin' egg. <laughs> this should just be called, like, making a mess with Mike. <laughs> god damn it! I, like, I ruined half my friggin' carton of egg. Oh, this is a fail. Well, hopefully it'll taste good. Whatever, don't worry about it. Anyway, then you're gonna get your nanners. And... Ooh, this one's nasty. All right, maybe let's put that to the side for now. Um, okay, I'm gonna get another one, and then we'll figure out what to do with this. Hope these aren't all nasty. And I know they say that they're like supposed to be brown, but whatever, we're living in the fucking apocalypse. Like, I don't have time to worry about this shit. Um, okay, these are all a little nasty, I guess, so we're just gonna cut that away. All right, so I like to slice some of them, and then also mash some of them with a fork, so it melts into it, and you get, like, different consistencies. So do that with, like, four bananas or five bananas, however many you friggin' feel like. If they're nasty parts, just cut it away. Oh, look! There's a nice banana. Okay, so you're gonna have mashed bananas and sliced bananas, and you're gonna mix the nanners in. I might have put too many in, but whatever. No such thing. It's banana pudding. Who gives a shit? Okay, now you're gonna get Lorna Doonal... Whatever the fuck these are called. They're really good. So, use these. Don't come at me with no Nilla wafers or any of that shit. Um, and you're gonna take these. And you're just gonna break them into pieces in there. Not so they're like crumbs, but... Because they'll get soft once it refrigerates and it'll be like little cake in it and these are really good so I make it almost like equal ratio banana to cookie <laughs> and check it out okay it might not be the most attractive thing but it tastes good so put this shit in a container put it in the fridge and then it's done I'm probably gonna eat it now though, cause I am a fat slob. It, see if it needs anything. Mine needs a little salt, so I'm gonna add a little salt. Could add a squeeze of lemon, whatever you want. You do you. All right, check it out. Put that container on. Put her in the fridge. And look at that. Banana pudding. All right. See you guys next time, Puddin'.